Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name's Brian if you happen to be new around here, but if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back you sexy beast. That's what you get for subscribing by the way, free compliments at the start of these videos. Now, this is my ninja controller guide for Endwalker, but being that I don't know if you've seen my controller guides before, I'm gonna walk you through the entire controller setup. And if you want more information beyond what this video offers, I do have a complete controller guide that is linked in the playlist below. So hopefully that helps answer any and all of your controller related questions but welcome to the guide the other thing i want to share with you guys at the right at the start of this is that all of my layouts that you see here used in these videos are actually sets of macros that you can easily apply for yourself if you go and copy those and go into your user macros and actually start pasting them and then you can actually hit execute it will set up your hotbars exactly like you see it here in these videos. But this isn't to sit here and say that my layout is the best layout. My layout is hopefully a really good entry point into the job itself, and then you can take it and make it your own. As always, I'm always curious to see what changes you ultimately make when it comes to these videos. But without further ado, guys, welcome to the guide. If you feel like it earns it, hit that like button and subscribe for more Final Fantasy content and rants. That's something we do here on the channel but beyond just that itself let's go ahead and first dive into your system and character configuration now this is where you're going to do most of your basic setup but if you want a little bit more control before we actually go to character configuration go to system configuration and take a look at the controller gamepad settings now you can do some button configuration if you want to do a little bit more advanced stuff like you'll see here in this video namely that i have my r3 as execute micro 99 and i do actually modify where my jump and my menu buttons are so i actually swap those personally but what execute 99 of the macro actually gets you if you go back into the macro section if i drag it over here you'll see here uh, my movement macro uh, again, this is actually in the documents itself, but ultimately it allows me to have contextual based skill set. So I don't actually have to uh, put me, my sprint or my flying mountain roulette on my macros as well. So here's how that actually looks like. If I click R3, I'm out in a world so I can actually summon a mount and I go ahead and get on the mount. Now, if I'm going to go ahead and sprint, if I jump, I actually am now sprinting. If I'm doing PvP, I'll use PvP sprint. If I'm doing just a dungeon, I will actually use my sprint as well. So that's the contextual sense of uh, the R3 um, movement macro that I have configured here. So just note that's where you're going to see uh, that come into play. You won't see these listed on any hot bars. But back into character configuration. Under general, I use legacy type movement. That means my camera, my character moves however I want it to. If you want more of that WASD, you would want to check out standard type character based movement as well. Also, uh, further down the list here, you can see a bunch of different settings, especially when it comes to your inversion, both keyboard and mouse and first person, uh, as well as cutscene skipping. If you've ever seen a cutscene already in the game and you want to save yourself some time going into the content, you can turn that on. Under target, a new feature that was added recently, auto target according to priority, uh, closest ranged or a line of sight. And then you can also enable full auto target. I highly recommend this as a controller player. This, especially with some of the abilities they introduced in Endwalker, saves you a ton of time and a lot less stress. But again, play with it, see if it feels good for you and then go from there. Um, also under the uh, filter section, when it comes down to target settings that I use, I have enemies set to when my weapon is drawn and nothing else. And then I have my custom for when my weapon is sheathed. You'll notice that I have party members turned off in both cases. And the reason is, is that up and down on your D-pad actually cycles through your party members where left and right will actually then cycle through anything else that you want to see on the screen itself. That's going to be personally up to you. I find that the most comfortable. And then if you ever needed to focus just on party members and things like that, you can actually enable custom filters where you hold down left bumper and press any of the face buttons, A, B, X, Y, or square circle triangle X at cross square. I don't know. Uh, the, uh, and using that as a, as a structure, uh, for your uh, filters there. Now, under the cross hotbar settings, in this case, uh, I have display hotbar numbers turned off. If you turn that on, you'll see all these little floating hotbar numbers. I also have hide unassigned slots. If I turn that off, uh, then you can see all these little extra gray boxes out there. I want to kind of keep that nice and clean. And then overall, from a sharing uh, perspective, I am sharing just seven and eight on my cross hotbar and six through 10. This means that no matter what job, class, what I'm doing, this, the abilities are always going to be the same on there, but one through six will always be job and class specific. 
under the cross hop bar session, I'm using hold, but if you find yourself having hand dexterity issues, you might want to try toggle or mix modes to see if that is a little bit more comfortable for long playing sessions. Uh, however, some of these features, especially the expanded cross hop bar and the double cross hop bar, the double tap here left and right, do require you to be in hold mode. I also have always display the W cross hop bar and return to w, uh, the cross hop bar after W cross hop input. So if I use something like second wind, automatically I'm ready to go back into my rotation. Uh, so this is something that is used as one off abilities before it returns you right there. All of this is managed in your custom. So one of the things that I get asked is how do you drag and drop abilities here on to the, uh, the W cross hop bar? And the answer is you don't. Uh, you actually have to use what is called the linked hop bar to be able to set that ability. So you can see here, I can put that right there, move it around as well. Uh, put my limit break back on the bar and move this back up here. You cannot interact with the W cross hop bar uh, shortcut. You have to m interact with what it is linked to. And you can see here, my W cross hop bar is linked to three left and three right, which you can see here for the set. Holding down our bumper will allow you to actually cycle through with any of the face buttons to any of the sets, or you can actually tab between some of them. Just depends on how you have your set selection configured here. Now my expanded cross hop bar is set to two left and two right. So if I hold down the left bumper, uh, L trigger and R trigger, and then R trigger and L trigger, you can see here I have a whole different set of abilities and that's actually managed via the two set. So those are all just linked right there and managed this way. Now, all again, this is all included in the macros themselves. And that's how you get all of this configured and ready to go for the set selection. I have when my weapon is sheathed that by pressing our bumper, I can do hot bar one, seven or eight. Uh, if my weapon is drawn, it's going to keep me locked on hot bar one and what that actually looks like for you guys. So if I pull out my, my weapons with by pressing down on the left uh, stick, that's essentially the L3 here. Uh, if I press right bumper, it's not going to move me to any other thing. I'm not going to find myself accidentally bumping L or R3 or R2, whatever it's called. And um, and then finding myself, oh no, you know, missing out on how that, that functions. But that's essentially how that ultimately works. So you'll be able to play around with that. Uh, and if you find it comfortable, then that's great. And if not, no worries. But now what I want to do is go over the entire skill set that the ninja has, giving you guys a good context of what we have. And then when we come back, uh, we'll actually walk you through my layout, my setup, uh, and then talk about kind of some of the situations you have. And then we'll talk about my glamour and so much more. So lots more to come. So if you guys just need, feel free to use the chapter markers in the YouTube playhead below to jump to any specific section. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about our skills. All right. So now let's go ahead and dive into our uh, weapon skills, actions, and abilities for the ninja. Just as a note, uh, if you guys are new to my channel and my content, I'm probably going to butcher some of the pronunciations that you see here today. It's not on purpose. It's just how my brain processes words. Uh, feel free to sound off in the comments below with correct pronunciations. And I'll do my best to continue to educate myself so that I can actually speak fluently when it comes to words that are unfamiliar to me or words that I just generally struggle with. If you've been following me for any period of time, you'll probably already have a list of these words that naturally I cannot say. But anyway, all that being said, let's get started. We're actually using our compact view. Uh, you can switch between the list uh, for the class and job or the compact view, which shows you the upgrades and combos within the game itself. I figured this will actually be interesting to check out. Let me know if you guys actually appreciate this view when going over all the different abilities. So level one, you get spinning edge. Uh, as a side note, this is level 90 potencies that are all shown. So as a, uh, these upgrade, uh, that's how it's gonna be reflected. So if you see different numbers, one of two things have happened, either you're not level 90 yet, or the game's been updated to make some potency adjustments, but we'll cover all that in future videos if needed. All right, Spinning Edge delivers an attack with a potency of 220. Uh, it also will increase your Niki gauge by five. This combos into Gust Slash with a potency of 320. Uh, you'll see if you do not use the combo, it has a potency of 160, so you are losing power on it, uh, but a 320 combo potency with the Niki gauge increase of five. And then this can go into one of two abilities, Algolian Edge, uh, this delivers a potency of 380 uh, with a rear combo potency with you focusing on the back at 440. So you want to be paying very close attention to your positionals for outgoing and edge. And this will increase your Nikki gauge by 15. Or you can go into armor crush for a flank combo potency of 420. Otherwise, you're just going to get the 360 combo potency. And this will actually extend Hooten uh, by 30 seconds to a maximum of 60 seconds with the same Nikki gauge of 15. Now we'll cover this more in how I lay out 
my my setup and again you can always check out the macros themselves but you'll notice that armor crush here as a flank i'm positioning it on what would communicate to me the flank as opposed to something like here is what i would consider the rear and this would be the flank if a positional is required and that's just something i set up on my controller just to make life a little bit easier for me in the aoe combo ness of it all you have death blossom uh, this is going to deliver potency with 100 to all nearby enemies and increase Nikki gauge by five this combos into haka majuna sanau uh, this will uh, have a potency of 130 and will extend Hooten by 10 seconds for a maximum of 60 seconds and will give you a Nikki gauge increase of 5. Then in further weapon skills, you have a throwing dagger. This is a ranged attack. Delivers an attack with a potency of 120 with an increase of your Nikki gauge by 5. Hurujin uh, delivers an attack with a potency of 200. It will grant Hooten for 60 seconds. It's a great easy way to re uh, refresh your Hooten without having to use your ninjutsu and increases your Nikki gauge by five. Then you have Forked Raichu and also Fleeting Raichu. Uh, when you look at the potencies on both, they are both set at 560. The difference here, especially when it comes down to the range, uh, with Forked Raiju, this is a range of 20 yams versus Fleeting Raiju, a range of 3 yams. So just kind of pay attention of that. Uh, you can only execute both under the effect of Raju Ready, which it ties into your uh, ninjutsu. All right, then you have abilities. Shade Shift, learn to level two. Creates shadows that nullify damage up to 20% of your maximum HP. You have Hide. Blend in with your surroundings, make it impossible for most enemies to detect you, but reducing movement speed by 50%. Has no effect on enemies 10 levels higher than your own or certain enemies within special sight. This will restore uh, two charges of all Murda. Uh, the effect of Doton ends upon execution of Hide, cannot be executed while in combat. And then we go into Mug. This delivers an attack with the potency of 150. Uh, increases target's damage taken by 5%. Uh, and this will last for 20 seconds. The additional effect here is increases the chance of additional items being dropped if target under the Mug is dealt before or as the finishing blow. And will increase your Nikki gauge by 40 by using this. Then you have Trick Attack. Delivers an attack with a potency of 300. 400 when executed target's rear. And this will increase damage that you deal specifically to the target by 10%. Can only be executed under the effect of Hidden. And then you have 10. Uh, this uh, takes a Ritual murder and Gestures for the Heavens. Uh, you have two charges of this. Basically, the 10, Chi, and Jin are your three ninjutsu moves together. You get two charges of these. There's a way with Kasanu uh, to actually affect it where you can use it as well, but we'll cover that here in a second. And then your ninjutsu action, depending on the order that you put in your Ten Chi and Jin, will actually then uh, translate into which uh, ninjutsu you'll be using. Then you have uh, Shuka Kaju. Uh, this is going to uh, move quickly to the specific location of your choice. Then you have Kasantu. This is going to allow you the execution of a single ninjutsu without consumption of murder charges. Increases damage for the next ninjutsu action by 30% as well, and that will last for 15 seconds. Then you have Dream Within a Dream, and this is why I actually really wanted to show you guys this. This is the upgrade of Assassinate. Delivers an attack with a potency of 200, but then that becomes Dream Within a Dream, and you can see that here. Delivers a threefold attack, each hit with a potency of 1. 50 and then you have Hellfrong medium delivers fire damage with a potency of 160 to target and all enemies nearby and it will cost you 50 points of your nikki gauge it also shares a recast timer with bahakla for a fair river <laughs> as i just trip over that so let's just not repeat that uh that shameful pronunciation and just go right into it uh this deals unexpected damage with a potency of 350 uh and the potency is increased to 500 when under the effect of metsu uh, Metsu uh, Mississui with the cost of 50 shares a recast timer with Hellfrog Mimium. Then at level 70, you get Tenchi Jin. Uh, this temporary converts each of the three Murda into an Ninjutsu action. Executing one of these actions will convert the remaining Murda into different Ninjutsu actions until all three have been executed for the Tenchi Jin effect expires. Only Ninjutsu available while active, the same Ninjutsu can only be active, uh, executed twice and cannot be executed one of the effect of Kasansu. Uh, or it also ends if you move. Then you have Meatsui. Uh, this dispels Sutin, uh, increases the Nikki gauge by 50, and increases the potency of the Baha Krava uh, to 500, and that's going to last for 30 seconds. Then you have Bushin. This grants five stacks of Bushin, each stack allowing your shadow to attack enemies 
each time you execute a weapon skill. Shadow attack potency varies based off the attack executed, but is not affected by combo bonuses. So you can see your melee attack potency of 160, range from 160, area of effect attack potency of 80, increases by five each time you uh, sh your shadow lands is attacked for the Niki gauge. That will uh, last for 30 seconds. It also grants Phantom Kamachari ready, uh, and that will last for 45 seconds and a Niki gauge cost of 50. The action changes to Phantom uh, Kamagachi upon execution. Then you hear, uh, you jump into your unassignable actions. This is the everything within your ninjutsu world uh, that you want to pay attention to. Uh, Fuma Shuruken uh, delivers an attack with a potency of 450. A murder combination is any one of the Tenchi Jin murders. Triggers the cooldown of the weapon skills upon execution. Then you have Katan. Uh, deals fire damage with a potency of 350 to target and all enemies nearby it. This is uh, either Chi 10 or Jin 10. Uh, this will uh, be a nice AoE fire ability. Then you have Rathan. Uh, deals lightning damage with a potency of 650. Grants a stack of Raju ready. And this can have a maximum stack of three. Now, the Raiju ready effect ends upon execution of any melee weapon skill. The murder combination is either Ten Chi or Jin Chi uh, for that one. Then you have Houghton or uh, Hydro Ten, excuse me deals ice damage with potency of 350 and has the additional effect of bind and that will last for 15 seconds this is either ten chi or chi jin uh to use that and will also cancel your auto attack then you have hooten uh delivers weapon skill recast time and auto attack delay by 50 percent that's reduces excuse me uh, that will last for 60 seconds this is either going to be uh jin chi 10 or chi jin 10 uh to execute hooten then you have Doton, uh, creates a patch of Corrupted Earth, dealing damage with a potency of 80 to any enemies who enter, and uh, that will last for 80, uh, 18 seconds, and as, add a heavy effect of 40%. Now, heavy in this game makes your movement slower, uh, so that's going to be how that applies. This will be either Ten Chi Chi, uh, Ten Jin Chi, or Jin Ten Chi uh, to execute that. Then you have Soten, uh, delivers a water damage with a potency 500. It will grant you the effect of Soten. Uh, this basically allows you to execute actions that which required you to be hidden. Uh, and this could be Ten Chi Jin or Chi Ten Jin to execute that. Then you have Goka Mekurai. Uh, this deals fire damage with a potency of 600 to target and all enemies nearby it. Uh, this is going to be uh, Chi Ten or Jin Ten, but can only be executed for this one under the effect of Kasantu uh, Seiyu. So that's going to be a part of that combo. Then you have Hydro uh, Renuri Ru uh, deals ice damage with potency of 1300. Uh, this is going to be Ten Chi or Chi Jin. Only can be executed under the effect of Kasandru. So note these are upgraded uh, abilities. And then you see here Phantom uh, Kamogachi deals shadow. Uh, your, your shadow deals wind damage to target and all enemies within five yams with a potency of 600 of the first enemy and 50% fall off for all remaining. They extends her uh, Hooten uh, duration by 10 seconds and a max up to a maximum of 60 and also increases your Nikki gauge by 10. And then your last uh, one here is Hollow uh, Nazaruchuri. All enemies standing in the corrupted earth of Doton take additional earth damage with the potency of 50. Requires Haku Matsuri to be executed as a combo action upon executing Katan, Goru, or Phantom. Uh, and the effect can only be triggered while Doton is active. So that is your skills and your abilities for the ninja. Now, ultimately, from a role perspective, you have all the same uh, melee ones, second wind, leg sweep. Second one's going to be a heal you every two minutes. Leg sweep is going to be your stun. Bloodbath is going to heal you based off the damage you do. Faint is going to lower target's physical damage dealt by 10% and magic damage by 5%. Arm's length will bury, uh, prevent knockback and draw in effects. This also adds a 20% slow when your barrier is actually struck. Great for tanks. This is great for mitigating knockbacks. And then finally, you have uh, your true north, which nullifies action directional requirements. Uh, so things like, again, the uh, Algoian Edge and Armor Crush uh, could be paired with uh, true north, especially if the boss is in an awkward position and you want to make sure you're maximizing out that potency. It is a charged ability with 45 second re uh, recast or recharge time. So you do have plenty of ability with that. And if you guys are curious as to more about your traits, you can always go check out and read those for yourself. You can see here that uh, the ninja has a few of those, but ultimately that's going to be how it is. So now let's get into the logic and into how I play ninja on controller. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and take a look here at my layout. Now, you'll see here I've got uh, one of the things with the macros that will be a little bit messed up is the Raiju. Now, if I go ahead and right click on this, actually, let me just go to three because that's where it's going to be better suited. And then I can say edit macro. 
you'll see here this uses fleeted and fork now the raiju abilities themselves are ranged as we covered in the previous section uh, one is three yams and the other is 20 yams so ultimately i'm using fail through if i cannot use the three yam with fleeting it's going to automatically use the fort uh raiju because you, they're also sharing a recast timer so that is essentially uh together so just note that you can you have a little bit of flexibility in that i went ahead and set that up just from a comfort level perspective but here on the left hand side you'll see your limit break uh cassandra my raiju macro my hide my tenchi jin uh, this is really great for especially uh, as it's got every two minutes you basically get to fire off a bunch of ninjutsu before you get into it left hand side this is kind of my aoe wheelhouse uh you'll see death blossom and hockey uh, and then you also see hell frog as well but then also i have access to my ninjutsu right over here i wanted this to be easy and comfortable to be able to be used so you'll see ten chi and jin as well as my ninjutsu here as well and bushin over here on the right hand side because i want to be able to make sure i'm using that because this still buffs my aoes uh so that's actually really important to me now on the right hand side dream within the dream which is the upgrade from assassinate you see mug you see Matsui, uh, Brock, I always want to say Brocklova, so it is what it is. I apologize for everything. Uh, and then you see Spinning Edge, Gust Slash, Alugan Edge, and Armor Crush. And the reason you see Alugan there and then you see Armor is because Armor is going to be a flank positional and Alugan is going to be from the rear. Uh, so and that's going to be very important. You can always modify these with True North to be able to have a little bit of flexibility. Now, if we go into our uh, W cross up our right, you'll see second wind and bloodbath, some self recovery here. Uh, then you see Bushin, make sure that I can pop that off as a part of my single, uh, you know, target rotation, trick attack as I use my ninjutsu, uh, Tenchi Jin, uh, my preventing knockback with arm's length, hide, again, true north. And then if we go into my expanded hotbar set, you'll see here on the right hand side, ninjutsu, Tenchi Jin, uh, then I see Throwing Dagger over here, my Raiju Macro, my uh, Hurricane, and my Kasanu. And then over here on the uh, left-hand side, you'll see my uh, my Gap Closer, my Throwing Dagger, my Hurricane, my Stun, True North, Shade Shift, Faint, and uh, Kasanu there as well. And kind of how I put this all together, kind of just in a bare, uh, brief kind of macro setup. If I want to then begin my, my targeting and my attacks, if I want to go over here to do something on the flank, come back into it let's go ahead and do some bushin Get that extra damage build up that nikki gauge even faster now here's where it gets real fun because one of the things i want to be able to do is obviously pull off my various different ninjutsu i can fire up 10 t gen go right into it this also then gives me that fleeting raiju i can pop this on Build up a couple stacks. I do like that a lot. I'm I I have a massive love of electricity <laughs> uh, when it comes down to it. That was always my superpower of choice uh, when I was designing my own uh, superhero, uh, so to speak. So you can see here how easy it is to be able to get into ninjutsu and fire off various different skills. Now, when it comes down to like an AOE rotation, you'll see that listed over here. Again, you'll be able to build up. Hellfrog, and then as your ninjutsu uh, refreshes, you'll also have access to it over here. So we're going to wait till that comes off cooldown. So if I wanted to, I can go ahead and do some of this stuff and then fire off my big old AoE flame as necessary. One of the key aspects when it comes down to being a ninja is really understanding how all your ninjutsu work in tandem and what kind of things they combo into. Now, this video isn't going to go in that massive depth. I would recommend you check out like the balance discord for really looking into detailed openers and how to really kind of maximize uh, your ninjutsu. The goal here is just to make it as comfortable for you as possible. And that's essentially kind of the logic I have with it. I want to make sure that I can easily get to the skills that I need when I need them. And that's one of the things I found with doing the right trigger, left trigger to be able to fire off ninjutsu and whenever I needed it. And same thing over here on the left hand side for AOEs or even, you know, closing the gap and doing various things like that to be able to get in and start my attack. Or if I needed to, uh, and the enemy is without, you know, I don't want to stand in bad. I can, uh, I can still target it with various different ranged abilities as well on the single target side obviously the button changes a little bit because i wanted to prioritize my ninjutsu so that's just kind of be how that logic ultimately uh works out but 
Now I want to kind of bring you into kind of my HUD layout a little bit. Uh, this is pretty standard for all of my jobs right now, but you can always customize additional HUD layouts as necessary. I have my limit break gauge right here because this is very important, uh, especially if you're going to be a melee DPS to be able to bring in that big hit, uh, that big hurt to the enemy. I got my party list. Uh, I've got my target. I got my experience bar. I have turned off my mini map for this game as a just an immersion level of enjoyment action help my focus target bar and you can see here my parameter bar and additional things as well as my hot bar for here as a floating hot bar to communicate various cooldowns to me so that i have that information ready to rock and roll and then that brings me finally to our uh final thing this is usually something people ask me in terms of my character uh and my glamour right now rocking pretty much the level 89 90 set at the 560 here on the left hand side uh, you can see that here, not glamoring anything, but it looks really good. And then I've got a couple of pieces of 560 and 580 gear uh, listed over here on the right hand side. So nothing too fancy, but hopefully you got something good out of it in case you're curious and you want to check out the ninja and wondering how it plays on controller. I highly recommend it. It's a fun job to play. And that's going to be it for this guide. Thank you guys so much for your time. If you have any questions, sound up below. Hit us up on Discord. Join us for our community game nights. One way or another, we're having some fun in Final Fantasy XIV. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to wrap it up. I've got um, Dragoon to work on next. I know that's been a hotly requested uh, melee job. And then we'll probably do uh, we'll probably do a poll, see what you guys want me to work on after that. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for your time. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I'll see you in my next one. But until then, take care. Yeah. It's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments. That's right. You know me when it comes to destiny. I'm off with a clam, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh, yeah.